الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. So we've discussed our adab for gaining knowledge in general. Today we're going to be discussing the adab of the Quran specifically. What are the things that we want to what we want to do, and what are the things we want to avoid? والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القرآن آثم لأنه به الإله أنزل وهكذا منه إلينا وصلا وهو أيضا حلية التلاوة وزينة الأداء والقراءة we have external manners as well as internal manners when it comes to reciting the Qur'an. Dr. Amr Ushiswaid puts a list together for us of things that we want to do and things we want to avoid. As for those things to do, for those internal manners, the manners of the heart, when reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that you should understand the origin of the meanings of the words. So the origin of each word. This is going to help you maximize your understanding of what it is that you are reciting. He also says to remind yourself constantly that this is not the word of man. You know, this is not some ordinary book. This is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kalamullah. Literally Allah jalla fi ala speaking to us in a scripted Quran that we have in front of us. So we want to take it uh, very seriously and hold it to that high esteem. He also says that we should have that presence of heart when reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to discard all other thoughts. You know, so when you're reciting the Quran, Random ideas start coming to your head. Get rid of them. You know, someone walks in on you, you're on your phone, your phone rings, any kind of distraction. You want to get rid of those distractions while you're reciting the Quran. You want to give it the attention that it truly deserves for it is far more valuable than anything else on the face of this earth. Also, we want to ponder the meaning. So as well as knowing the linguistics behind each word, which is great, which we need to do as a part of our adab as well, but the general meaning, we need to ponder it and reflect over it and ask ourselves, how am I going to implement this? How am I going to let this verse, uh, you know, make the better of me uh, and so forth? So we want to ponder uh, the meaning. For there is no good in any act of worship if there is no uh, understanding uh, behind it or pondering behind the reason why uh, we're doing these things. Another very important factor is individualization. When you're reciting the ayat, these ayat are talking to me. That's what I want to have the attitude when I'm reciting the Quran. Not that because it started with inna ladina kafar that it doesn't refer to me. No. The word kafara means to cover. That could be referring to me. When I'm doing my sins, I'm covering, I'm neglecting, I'm ignoring, I'm being ungrateful. As the word kafara comes in the Quran to me, ungrateful. So I take everything as if it's talking directly to me. You know, I don't read the ayat like, oh, this is about Bani Israel, this is about the disbelievers, it has nothing to do with me, but rather. I take each ayah like it was revealed for me, so I can become better, so I can take the warning that is in each uh, and every single ayah. So those are literal, physical, uh, you know, I'm sorry, those are the internal manners that are going on inside of us, inside of our heart, you know, that, that purity, not getting distracted and uh, making sure every ayah is, is talking about us and reminding ourselves that this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for those physical and literal things that we want to do, those external manners, then first and foremost, we want purity of the body and of the clothes. We want to be pure. We want to be in a state of wudu. This is better. Big discussion amongst the ulama, whether it's fard or not. I do not think that it is fard. However, we are going to uh, you know, take that as seriously as we can by being on wudu, right? Just, uh, just for that extra uh, you know, part of our adab. You know, we want that, you know, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're conversating, we're reciting his kalam. We want to be in a state of wudu, we want to make sure our clothes are clean, we're in a state of purity. We also want to seek refuge uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan. Saying, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, this is of the adab. Saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the beginning of every surah, and where it is fit, if you're reciting in the middle of a surah, this is from the adab, right, uh, of, uh, of your recitation and of the isti'adah could even be followed because of the ayah that was revealed concerning it. Also, not only do we want to not get distracted, but we literally want to cut, uh, physically cut ourselves off from the outside world as well as, you know, like we said, those people who are going to come and going to talk to us and whenever our phone rings, we want to put them on do not disturb and put them on. That physical preparation 
and that physical distancing yourself as well as that emotional one. So the earlier one was about the matter of the heart, not letting yourself get distracted. This is a physical barrier that you're going to place between you uh, and any kinds of distractions. Also, something uh, you know, that we literally want to do verbally is whenever we approach an ayah that has to do with adab, we seek or, or punishment, we seek Allah's refuge from that punishment. And whenever we come across an ayah that has to do with reward and with jannah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that reward. This is of the adab of the Qur'an. This is the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salawatu wasalam. Also of those physical characteristics and adab and mannerisms of, of reciting the Qur'an is that the Qur'an should move you and it should lead you to the point of tears even at time. Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah, he said that crying while reciting the Qur'an is a characteristic of those who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to first truly believe that this is kalamullah. You have to understand what is actually being read for you to reach that state where the, the Qur'an can move you so much that it would lead you to tears. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, That the, the mountain, the strongest structure that we know, the most predominant structure, would crumble out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if this Qur'an were to be revealed from him. We always want to place our trust in Allah Jalla Fi'ala when reciting the Qur'an. Uh, we want to seek his help and seek his aid before seeking the aid of anyone else. We want to be in a constant state of review with our Qur'an. It says, yani, uh, if, if not mandatory, the least we can say about it is it being uh, from the adab of the Qur'an, that we give it its haq, we give it its review, that we're in a constant state of reviewing those ayat, reviewing the meanings of those ayat, striving our utmost in pronouncing the Qur'an properly. These are all from the adab of the Qur'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and to grant us the adab of the Qur'an as well as the adab of all kinds of ilm, as well as granting us that general ikhlaq, that general a uh, great character that the Prophet alayhi salawatu wasalam came to perfect. And we ask Allah jalla fi ula to make us from Ahl al-Qur'an. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.